From starving artist to luxury designer, meet the man behind Kisselstein Cord. Call him one of fashion's best kept secrets for close to 30 years. Barry Kisselstein Cord has been designing jewelry for the jet set. But now that a loyal following includes names like Oprah Winfrey and Tom Hanks, the cat may soon be out of the bag. Barry Kieselstein Cord joins me for a look at moving into the mainstream. Welcome. Well, thank you. The fact is, the fashion elite has known about you from, it seems, the very beginning, even when you were a struggling artist. Build a better mousetrap, they'll find you. But you did something different. I mean, you do very expensive, very labor-intensive types of designs, but it's really not for society matrons or people who are just necessarily trying to show off flashy jewelry, that kind of thing. How would you describe it? Well, I, I think it really runs the gamut. It goes from something that's extremely simple, which we don't have on the table. Actually, we do. <laughs> um, and, and really not very expensive. I mean, you're looking at the range from over here, $195 to... $2,200. It's not really a lot. And it goes up to $50,000, well, yes? if you really push it, probably $100,000. What inspires you? Or how, how, what is the common theme? Or is that not Well, really, really anything. You know, as, as an art major in school and um, later in business, uh, it's just naturally to be a visual person, and, and I'm visually stimulated by everything I see. But it's funny, because you really weren't a great student, according to your official biography. You were... Did you have ADD or dyslexia? Or, I, think you know? I, I think I had it all, but that was the academic <laughs> part. Academics were one thing. That was your excuse to get into design? Of course. So is it the fact that once you got over your major hurdles, having people like Oprah Winfrey, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, those types of people, that's it? You can just do anything, do no wrong? No, you can always do wrong, because there are, you know, the vagaries of fashion, a lot of the dictates of, of media and magazines. Uh, however, when you work in the milieu that I do, which is precious materials, you are less at the mercy of, uh, shall we say, the fashion press. And, and you really, but you really don't do things. We're looking at your studio now, and you're seeing some, what appears to be highly skilled artisans Indeed. working on, on designs. But do you, does it matter what's being shown in Milan or on the New York runways to you? I have to say, in my case, no, it doesn't. Uh, then you, you get sucked into the vortex of having to be there at the moment. And we're not about the moment, we're about long term. And the fact is, some of your most devoted uh, clients have been collecting and adding on. Uh, they have dozens. Yes, of, and of some of the museums, too. We're in the permanent collection of the Louvre in Paris, the permanent collection of the Metropolitan in New York, Houston Museum of Fine Arts. It's a long list. So we transcend fashion. But you, you're still handmade. You, you, you're not going to do, when we say mainstream, it's not like you're going to have you know, a, a factory out in Akron putting we, out we, your work. We won't be IBM or Corning Glassware, no. <laughs> Is this as big as you want it to be? No. Uh, actually, we've targeted a small market, and as we go to different countries, we, of course, will grow the business, or that's the intention. Um, I've always been a slow-growth fan. This way, you can devote yourself to really high quality. But you've been held back a little bit by the economies in certain areas? Not really. Actually, in the down economy, we do better, because people have uh, less of a tendency to throw money at anything, and they start being very discriminating about what they purchase, and they purchase quality versus quantity. Are they more discerning about what they buy? For instance, they won't necessarily buy the $20,000 belt. They might go for the $1,500 handbag. Actually, they'll go for the $20,000 piece. Um, they use it to augment uh, a full wardrobe that they normally wouldn't buy. So the opportunity to wear accessories to update um, what you normally would do with your wardrobe, it, you take over your wardrobe with the fine accessories. You have your own alligator farm, is that correct? No, I don't. <laughs> I, was, I read this in one of that you actually... It's kind of fun idea. So that's not... You don't, you don't no, actually no, no. are in charge of, no, no, no. of getting your own product? No, no. no. Don't let the petter people okay. chase me. <laughs> okay. I, I know. That's why I had to ask to make Absolutely sure... Absolutely not. What about your own management style? In your official bio, it said that you were too proud to ask for your family's money, that you worked out of a cold water flat, that's true. that you burned furniture for heat? Yes, and before they made kindness and stanchions out of plastic, I did that too. Burned those also. Why, did, why didn't you ask your family for help? Uh, because I always felt that making it on your own um, required that you put in really basic time doing the hard stuff. 
and uh, I found that it was uh, you know a really good growing experience and an opportunity to really prove yourself pull yourself up by your own bootstraps you learn a lot is that how you are now as a father as well I think so but I'm a bit indulgent <laughs> I think a lot of parents are it's a pleasure to meet you congratulations with the wonderful success you've had Barry Kizzelstein Court thank you thanks for coming by thank you very much